Welcome to Truth in History. God's true people, Israel. Revelation of God's plan. Fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Mystery of God shall be finished. Kingdoms become kingdoms of Christ. Truth in History with Charles A. Jennings. Welcome to Truth in History. On this series of lessons that we are endeavoring to give, I have entitled it, Once There Was a Great Nation. I want to begin with a verse of Scripture that we all know by heart. It's found in the book of Psalms, chapter 33 and verse 12. It says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom He hath chosen for His own inheritance. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. What about that nation that once knew God and then turned their back on their God? Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, once asked, Can a nation change their gods? Yes, ancient Israel changed their God from the true and living God to polytheism or many gods to Baal, Chemosh, Ashtaroth, etc., Ishtar. They began to worship the gods whom they knew or came in contact with because of the heathen nations around them. And they adopted their gods. And what happened? The Lord spewed them out of His mouth, so to speak, and drove them out of the land which He gave them in promise, the Canaan land. I am thinking of America today. I am thinking of our own country, a nation that was once great, great in many ways, but we have changed our God. We have thrown out the God of the Bible. We have expelled the God of the Bible from our schools and our homes, our institutions, and our governments. So therefore, what happens now? That's the big question, what happens now? But I want to say this, looking back in history, looking back hundreds of years over the conditions of empires and nations of the past, I have come to the conclusion that wicked governments do not repent, but wicked governments are destroyed. And some of the historians tell us that Rome collapsed not from outside forces, but from within their own corruption. God gives warnings to nations. He gives warnings. God is fair. He has given America warning after warning. He gave ancient Israel warning after warning, and they failed to heed. Then the Lord sent the heathen nations 
to conquer ancient Israel and to carry them into captivity. Once there was a great nation. I want to begin in the book of Genesis. Genesis 48 records the account of Jacob when he was old. He knew he was dying, and he blessed his sons. And he blessed the two grandsons. That would be the two sons of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh. And he gave Ephraim and Manasseh a special blessing. And he gave them the birthright, especially Ephraim. And when we come to verse number 16 of Genesis 48, it says, The angel which redeemed me from all evil blessed the lads. That's Ephraim and Manasseh. And he said, Let my name be named on them and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth, a multitude of people. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, and he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head because Manasseh was the older. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he shall also be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. Now, if you've listened to this program for any time at all, you know that I believe that the Israelites, all 12 tribes of the Israelites, when they were expelled and taken into captivity, by the Assyrian Empire, and they began to migrate from the Assyrian Empire and cross the Caucasus Mountains, that's why we're called Caucasians, into northwestern Europe, British Isles. And the British nation, the people, the original people that established the British nation, represent the tribe of Ephraim. And it says it's going to be greater than Manasseh. And his seed shall become a multitude or a company of nations, of which Great Britain has done. And then Jacob said that his brother, Manasseh, was also going to be great. And the people that established the United States represents the tribe, the family, the offspring, and the blessing of Manasseh. So in the very beginning, the Bible prophesies through this Patriarch Jacob, that these Western nations are going to be great and greater. And the United States, represented by Manasseh, and the people that came from Northwestern Europe, Israelites, yes, literal, physical Israelites, descendant of the twelve sons establish these great nations, and we were established upon Christian principles. And 
As I read, it says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Now, I have brought along some notes with me this morning because I want to remind myself and to remind you of some of the great things, the godly things, the wonderful things that took place in our early beginnings in America. We think of the pilgrims. Can you imagine these people living in central England and the Spirit of God stirring them to leave their homeland and to leave a government that was oppressive for they could serve God according to the Scriptures as they understood it. So they moved to Holland. These pilgrims moved to Holland. They were there approximately 20 years in Leiden, Holland. And they saw where their children were being influenced by the decadence of that culture. They said, we must leave. And these people who once worshipped in a little chapel in Scrooby, England. Not a real big place. You can go there today and put your hand on some of the furniture that those pilgrims touched. You can touch the doorway that those pilgrims touched. But there was something in them, it was the stirring of God for that time and place to move out of that land and establish a great nation called America. And they set sail from Plymouth, England, once they left Holland. And we all know the story of the Mayflower and the Speedwell, and the Speedwell began to leak, so they came back, and they, most of them got on the Mayflower, and they came to America. And we all realize the hardships. No doubt you know the story better than I do. A hundred and two separatist Christians sailed from England to the New World for religious freedom because they said that they were leaving their native country because it was a pock of popery and a puddle of corruption. They sailed on the Mayflower for two and a half months. Only five of the 18 married women and 10 of the 29 young men and servants survived. They had a pastor, William Bradford, who was 44 years old. He was the oldest man to go ashore. And they, once they came to the new land, they were on that ship. And they had to stay on that boat and endure the hardship of winter. But they were going to an appointed place in the wilderness as prophesied in 2 Samuel 7.10. God was planting His people in a new land. And there they signed a compact, the Mayflower Compact. And I want to read you part of this compact to get the understanding of the mind and the Christian mentality of these people compared to the corruption that we see in our nation today. What a contrast. These people would probably turn over in their graves if they knew of the new bathroom law for the transgender people that has taken place in our nation today and the mandate from the president and his administration to schools to mandate 
accommodating transgender students in bathrooms. And if they don't comply, he said he will turn off the money flow from Washington. These pilgrims would turn over in their graves, my friend. Let me read you part of the Mayflower Compact. In the name of God, amen. We whose names are underwritten, the loyal subjects of our dread sovereign Lord King James, by the grace of God of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, King, Defender of the Faith, etc., having undertaken for the glory of God and advancement of the Christian faith and honor of our king and country, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia, do by these presents solemnly and mutually in the presence of God and one of another, covenant and combine ourselves together into a civil body politic for our better ordering and preservation and furtherance of the ends aforesaid. Can you imagine the magnitude of these words? They came here for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith. That's what made America great. Also, <clears throat> In 1630, above aboard the ship Arbella, John Wick, uh, Winthrop, John Winthrop wrote a model of Christian charity. This is what he said. Quote, we shall find that the God of Israel is among us when ten of us shall be able to resist a thousand of our enemies, when he shall make us a praise and glory, that men of succeeding plantations shall say, the Lord make it like that of New England. Unquote. Can you imagine the quality of faith and knowledge and understanding that these people had, especially compared to our so-called leaders today, even most of our preachers, they wouldn't dare talk about these things because they would be considered narrow-minded, exclusive. They would be considered racist. We need men in our pulpits today of courage. Well, let me read you another quote from Cotton Mather. He lived from 1663 to 1728. And he wrote this in 1702. He was a, a colonial a clergyman. He wrote an account of the advancement of Christianity in America. He entitled his book, The Great Achievement of Christ in America. And he quoted from the New England Confederation of 1643, which uh, was organized by the first governor of Massachusetts, John Winthrop. This is what he said, in part. Whereas we all came to these parts of America with the same end and aim, namely, to advance the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ and to enjoy the liberties of the gospel thereof with purities and peace and for preserving and propagating the truth and liberties of the gospel. Unquote. Can you imagine? one of our civil leaders standing up today and saying these things that we 
as a nation was established with the aim and end to advance the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ and to enjoy the liberties of the gospel because they realized that civil liberties came from the gospels. The civil liberty that we have today came through the avenue of the scriptures and the gospel. But no, our civil, lib our civil leaders today denounce the gospel and promote all types of corruption, and they promote debauchery, and they make excuses for those old white men that established our government and established our great nation. And they make excuses for all those old white racists because they were exclusive. They were Christian, mainly, not all of them. But you see, the, the aim of the liberal, the aim of the left, the aim of the globalists, the aim of the cultural change agents is to destroy Western Christian civilization. We may as well come to that understanding, and I do not understand why more preachers will not speak out against the corruption in our government and in our people. But this people, the Puritans, the pilgrims, and many others that came after them, that's what made America great. It was through Christ, the gospel, the scriptures, both old and new, and the principles of righteousness that made our nation great. We all know of Patrick Henry and his heroic speech and some of the wonderful things that he said, but he said, he went on to say, I can find my notes here. He went on to say that this nation, this nation was not founded only by religionists. Let me read you his quote. In 1776, Patrick Henry, that patriot of colonial era, Quote, it cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians, not on religion, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. For that reason alone, people of other faiths have been afforded freedom of worship here. This is what made America great. I realize that it's industry, inventions, great poets, educators, etc., has helped make America great but it was by prophecy from the words and the mouth of Jacob, and it was the fulfillment of that prophecy that our nation should become great, and it was great because of New Testament apostolic Christianity and the Scriptures both old and new. And now we have disdained that. We have outlawed the Bible. Our courts have outlawed the Bible. Our courts have outlawed prayers in schools. 
Our courts have outlawed decency in public. Now they're trying to destroy the very identity of a person's gender. God help us. God help us. In this ministry, we have produced many magazine issues, and these are just some of them. And if you have never received one of our magazines, we would love to send you one free of charge. We may send you the current issue. Sometimes we run out of the current issue. We'll have to send you a back issue that we have still on the shelf, but we'll send it to you absolutely free of charge. We have also making available some brochures that are free of charge just simply for the asking. That is, these are entitled The Six-Pointed Star, The Truth About the Six-Pointed Star. Who were the Galatians to identify who those people were that Paul wrote to? The God and people of two covenants? Why don't you believe what the prophets have told you? And what does the Bible say concerning cremation or burial? And the last one is entitled, Are the Jews Really the Israel of the Bible? I know that this is not politically correct material. This is not religiously correct material. But I'm not concerned about trying to please the public or please any of my ministerial peers. I've passed that stage. I'm not looking for ministerial acceptance. I'm looking for truth. I want to know the truth of God. And my spirit is stirred because of the decadence that our nation is in today. My spirit is stirred just like the Apostle Paul when he saw the whole city of Athens given over to idolatry in the book of Acts. It's time that we speak the truth without fear or favor. God help us. I pray that your spirit has been stirred today because Jesus Christ is coming and the Bible tells us He's coming back to destroy those that destroy the earth. And He's coming back as King of kings and Lord of lords and master over all of His enemies. God bless you richly. For any material offered on this program or to be a part of this ministry, please write or call today. We thank you and may God bless you for your response to this end time ministry. Truth in History, where the Word of God not bound.